Canada. I grew up in the Rocky Mountain town of Jasper, Alberta, and I raced for the Kona factory team. Um, yeah, I'm a three-time 24-hour world champion, and I've spent the last uh, four winters in Nepal training. Um, last year I showed up in Nepal end of October and first thing my coach Luke Way from Balance Point Racing in Canada uh, arrived with his wife Stacy and they did a one week training camp with the Nepali riders at the NCRR training center. So there they tested, bike fitted, gave some uh, coaching courses to the Nepal national team. And then after that was the Yak Attack race, um, a one week race around the Annapurna circuit. So I went there for the fourth consecutive year I took the title. And then one week after that I did the Annapurna 24 hour challenge, which is to ride Bessie Sahara to Benny in under 24 hours. And that's as a fundraiser for the Nepal Cycling Centre. So I did that end of November. And then after that was off season. So I uh, went trekking up to the Everest region, uh, spent a bit of time in Thailand, and then the last four months I've been up in, uh, I flew to Tamangtar and did a trek for one month up to the Everest base camp. Happy New Year's to all my friends and family back in Canada and around the world. Uh, yeah, just up here on Gokyo Ri, 5,300 meters. Um, yeah, sun setting, it's probably about minus 25, and uh, yeah, pretty gorgeous up here. And that is Mount Everest, a little bit of cloud cover, and uh, that's Mount Choyu, 8,000 meters, that on the other side. Yeah, anyways, nice spot to end the decade, and uh, yeah, see you all in 2020. And then we did a training camp with the Nepal national team in the Solokungu. March we finished up the training camp with nine Nepali riders and we uh, heard news that there was going to be a lockdown coming up because of the COVID-19. Um, so we sent the riders home one day early and they got back to Kathmandu and the next day was uh, lockdown. Uh, my girlfriend Usha and I decided to stay up in Solokumbu. For me the Solokumbu seemed like a good spot to stay with uncertainty of the virus. I mean the Solokumbu is a 10 hour drive from Kathmandu and you have to go over a mountain to get there and we were based around uh, Thaplu for the first while. And there it's just like, the concentration of people is very small. Um, everyone is socially distanced. It just seemed like the best place to be during a pandemic is. Um, we didn't go to town for the first uh, six weeks. Then after that, Ush would go once a week to get supplies. They were a very low key lifestyle, which is easy to do up in the mountains. At the start, there's so much uncertainty. Um, so we just stayed in stayed in the house and just stayed like super quiet, just tried to watch the situation. Then as it became apparent that it was uh, not really taking off in Nepal, it was a little bit relaxed. Um, we go for small rides up in the forest. Um, I mean, away from everyone, just straight from the house in the forest. It's uh, Corey Wallace here in Nepal. I'm currently in self-isolation up here in the Himalayas. Um, yeah, the government here has asked us to stay in uh, lockdown social distance, so yeah, up here in the mountains, listening to them, it's uh, yeah, it's hard to not be racing and group riding and training right now, but it's what they're asking us to do, so we're gonna stick to that. Um, yeah, the governments know what's going on, so we gotta listen to them, and uh, it's not a time to be selfish, so we gotta team up, beat this coronavirus, and we get back to our daily lives and bike racing soon. For the first bit, we stayed with a friend just outside of Fapu. And uh, the neighbors were uh, a couple of Nepali families. We grew really close to them. Um, they would give us potatoes and all the local food, spinach and uh, chicken eggs and stuff. And we did some work with them. And it was just cool to be immersed in the Nepali culture. Okay, that's good. Grab <laughs> 
Today we cut too much grass. <laughs> now the basket is going to be very heavy on my neck. <laughs> so hopefully I can get up. That's going to be the biggest challenge. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. We're up. Let's go. <laughs> Much more cow food tonight. Oh my god. Okay. This one's definitely heavier. It's giving me a small headache. And you go down like this. How do you go down? Yes. Go, 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 go. And you fall. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Lost my hat, but. <laughs> mm, this one here. It's cool just to have a slower pace of life for a while. And because I know for myself, I I spend my life traveling on different races in the world, so I'm always on the move, and never really have a lot of time just to stay in one spot. So it's been really cool. <laughs> and then I moved up. Uh, my girlfriend had to come back to Kathmandu to get surgery on her hand, and so she got a special pass to come back to Kathmandu. And I stayed up in the Sola Kumbu and moved up to the Chiwang Monastery. And there was a very welcoming uh, situation. The monks were amazing. Um, yeah, it was unforgettable for me, just like living at 3,000 meters off the side of a mountain and just a very simple life. Um, yeah, as the lockdown lifted, I'd ride my bike a bit more and then uh, just come back and hang out with the monks. Um, yeah, it was so cool. Uh, yeah, no one, the monastery had a, a road, a 2.8 kilometer, 350 meter vertical access road, which has no traffic and nothing on it. So it was, that was my training ground to go up and down there. And there's also one single track downhill. So I had like a, a one hour loop I could do. So that's basically where I trained when I was at the monastery. And at one point I had the idea of doing an Everesting, which is to climb the elevation of Everest, 8,848 meters in a single day on your bike. So that meant doing the monastery road 25 times up and down. Um, yeah, it took me 18 hours, and uh, yeah, it was one of the toughest rides I've done in a long time. It's hour 12 and a half here, and then lap 25 to go. I'm gonna lose daylight in about one hour. And yeah, the rain's coming down. It's gonna be a, gonna be a bit of a tough finish, but no problem. It's the morning after the Everson ride. And yeah, feeling a little bit foggy, a bit of a headache. Uh, that went on way longer than I expected. I was guessing 13, 15 hours. Went over 18. Um, yeah, I think part of it was uh, trying to ride on buckwheat and potatoes. Went well for about 12 hours and then the stomach just said no more food. And uh, yeah, tossed in a rainstorm towards the end. And uh, yeah, it just turned into a pretty epic night. Um, and yeah, we used it as a fundraiser. So half the funds went to the monastery. Um, to help them build a greenhouse and a dry shed for their clothes. Um, I just want to thank the, the monastery for taking me in during a, a tough time. And then a poor 25% went to Tadokana to help feed the poor in Kathmandu. And 25% went to the Nepal Training Center to help the Nepali cyclists continue to grow and um, expand their cycling skills. So yeah, in total, I believe just over 6,000 Canadian dollars was raised. And yeah, actually later today, we're gonna distribute um, food to the poor in the Swayambu region. It's been good to um, have a few projects going during the lockdown because we can't really live our normal lives. So it just keeps, uh, keeps me occupied while I wait for a flight to Canada. So I got to spend, yeah, three, four months in the Solo Kumbu, just really becoming part of that uh, community. So that was so cool. And then uh, coming back to Kathmandu, almost back at the monastery here, just waiting out a little storm. Um, yeah, that trip to uh, back to Kathmandu didn't go so well. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of bad weather, got to Patelli pretty late. And then uh, the next morning got stuck at the, we doing a checkpoint for over three hours. And there's another six to eight checkpoints between there in Kathmandu and 240 kilometers. So yeah, um, had to come back to Solari to get uh, more documentation. I might have to book a flight too, just to show that I have a reason to go back to Kathmandu. 
Morning. Oh, Kathmandu. Oh. Yeah, fast. Got the uh, permits I need and some good weather right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be in Patelli tonight and Kathmandu tomorrow. It's one of the first times I've ever been here when there's not traffic jams and no pollution. So it's just like, if this could be the reality, it'd be amazing. Um, the riding has been awesome right now. You can just hop on your bike, go wherever you want. You only need your uh, protection from the pollution. There's no traffic. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. It'd be awesome if it could stay this way. Yeah, I think up in this old Kumbu, there's no active cases. Um, so everyone's living a pretty normal life. Here in the city, there are some cases and everyone's pretty relaxed for, for, for my uh, <laughs> taking. Um, I think in Nepal, people deal with a lot of uh, difficult situations. So COVID-19 is just uh, another one. So it's just like continue life as normal. Um, and yeah, I've been away from Canada for nine months. So I'm looking forward to seeing my friends and family. Um, it's a long time to be away from home. And to just get back to Canada for the yeah, Canadian summer and to see my team as well. The, Kona factory team. Um, haven't seen those guys in a while. I love Nepal, love Canada, so it's nice to have a balance of both. <laughs> Nepal advertised lifetime experiences for Visit Nepal 2020. And uh, yeah, they deliver that one for sure. Um, yeah, the, the experience of the last four months is something which I'll never forget. I just want to thank the people in Nepal for being so open to uh, us foreigners. And yeah, it just felt like home the last a while. Nepal's a beautiful place to visit, so. Hopefully it can come back to the way it was and tourism can come, can come back and help the economy take off again because I know there's a lot of unemployment right now. So um, yeah, goodbye for now. I'll be back. Just don't know when.